Brianna Dignard here and welcome to my channel. Happy Easter, happy last day of March. Um, and that means it is the last day of my 31 days of women scientists initiative journey outfit thing that I've been doing. Um, and before we get into the bulk of today's Easter themed video, I just wanted to take a second and thank you all so much for joining me on this 31 days of women scientists. And if this happens to be the very first video of mine you're watching, um, go back and watch every single video that I posted for all of March where I had a different women scientist inspired outfit every single day, highlighting women scientists in history and all of their accomplishments. I had a lot of fun doing this. I've actually done it in the past, just like on my own for just why not? Um, but today is the first year I actually did it like kind of for public, making videos about it, doing it for 31 days. I did it in February last year. Um, and it was a lot of fun. It was also pretty exhausting. I counted and I made a, or at some point, like I had made 11 of the outfits I wore featured something that I had constructed and four of those outfits being something that I've made in the past month for this channel and um, for this thing. So a lot of work, a lot of fun, and I am so grateful for all of your positive responses for it. And I hope you stick around for more fun stuff. Um, so thank you again. It was a lot of fun. Um, I gotta go back to dressing like me for the next month. That's not as much fun as dressing like a women scientist. Um, but today is also Easter and one of the best things to do on Easter or around Easter that people do a lot is to dye Easter eggs. And guess what? Dyeing, food coloring, all of that stuff. It's a lot of chemistry, so let's get to learning. <laughs> To dye Easter eggs, we're gonna need a couple of different things. So first and foremost, you need eggs. Um, I hard boiled these the other days, so they're all ready to eat after we've been dyed if we want to. You're also gonna need vinegar, and I'll get into the science of that in here in a second after we dye these eggs. Some food coloring, a bowl to put your egg and dye in. If you want to do multiple colors, um, you need a different bowl for every single color of dye you need. Um, some hot water, and then if you're looking to decorate your eggs further, um, some rubber bands or crayons that will block the dye in different designs where you don't want the dye to be. I don't have any crayons, so we have rubber bands. Well, the first thing we want to do is prepare our dye bath. So we need to put in a teaspoon of vinegar. And this is probably like the biggest vat of vinegar for the tiniest amount, a teaspoon of vinegar. And some amount of food coloring. I ended up with gel food coloring because that's like all I had at the store. Um, but you can use liquid as well. And I have blue because my favorite color. And then we're gonna need a cup of hot water. Ooh, blue. And then we're gonna stir that up. And the liquid food coloring will break up a little bit easier than my gel food coloring was. Ooh, hot vinegar water. Woo! So there you go, our dye bath is ready. Um, and now we can decorate our eggs. So if you have crayons, you can draw designs on it. If you have rubber bands, you just wrap them around and whichever area the crayon or the wa crayon or the rubber band touches is going to get not dyed. So you can make cool designs on your eggs. Cool, I haven't dyed an Easter egg and I don't even know when. <laughs> gosh dang. For goals. No, oh my gosh. The struggle is real, my guys. All right. Now that I have this in whatever decoration the heck I want, I'm gonna stick it in my little bath. Woo! And <laughs> I'm actually gonna add, a, my rubber band fell off, a little bit more water to this just to cover my egg. Perfect, so now we're gonna let it sit there and then I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the chemistry of dyeing as our Easter egg dyes. Now that our egg is sitting in the dye bath and we're letting its color little do its work, Let's talk about the chemistry going on in there. So first off, dye molecules like found in our food coloring are organic molecules. So this all has to do with organic chemistry, meaning molecules that are gonna contain carbon. So these dye molecules are very big and if you have no idea what you're looking at, they're kind of scary looking at the molecular level, but that's okay. Our main goal in using a dye is we're trying to stick it to whatever we're trying to dye. So in this case, our blue food dye, we're trying to get those dye molecules to stick to the egg's surface. And the reason the dye appears as blue is because light is hitting those dye molecules. Some of that light is getting absorbed by the molecule itself and some is getting reflected back to our eye. 
In this case, the color blue is being reflected back to our eye, so we see the dye is blue. Actually, I don't even know if this is in frame. This is very hot. Um, so we have our dye, it's reflecting blue light at us, but we want those dye molecules to stick to the surface of the egg. Now an egg is actually a pretty good surface for sticking dye to. Um, it all has to do with the, chem with the surface chemistry of what's going on with our material. Some fabrics also have very good surface chemistry for dyes to stick to, while other ones are very slippery and the dyes don't like to stick to them. Um, our rubber band or the wax from our crayon, the dye molecules don't like to stick to it or it blocks them, which is why if you color on it or put rubber bands around it, your egg isn't going to have dye there because if you've changed the surface chemistry of the egg in that spot and the dye is no longer sticking to it. Now you may also have wondered, why did we add vinegar to the dye? This is because vinegar is acidic and it actually breaks down a little bit of the surface of the eggshell. It's changing the surface chemistry and making it better to stick to the dye. So first off, it's kind of dissolving a little bit and creating a bunch of cracks and crevices in the surface of the eggshell. And actually, if you leave an egg in vinegar for long enough, it'll dissolve the eggshell completely. Hello, quick demo break to talk about that naked egg demo I was just talking about over there. So basically all you gotta do is put a raw egg into a cup. Oh, try not to crack it when you put it into the cup. And pour vinegar over it. And then you let it sit overnight and watch what happens. It has been a full 24 hours since we put our egg in vinegar. Now let's go see what happened to it. Oh, look at that. This shell is all gone and is all left with just the membrane because the acid in the vinegar dissolved the eggshell. Now we have a naked egg. All right, let's go into dyeing some Easter eggs. Isn't that naked egg demo insane? But in this case, we're not trying to dissolve the eggshell completely. So we don't put a bunch of vinegar in the bath. We only put a teaspoon and we don't leave it overnight. But we are trying to dissolve the eggshell just enough to have some nooks and crannies that the dye molecules can stick to better. In addition, the vinegar um, being an acid deposits hydrogen ions onto the surface of the eggshell. Hydrogen ions have a positive charge. All of our organic dye molecules we're using have a negative charge. Just like magnets, opposites attract and now our egg surface chemistry is more willing to accept those dye molecules. But guess what? It doesn't just work with vinegar. It works with all different types of acids. So I have gathered many, a couple of different acids that I could find in my kitchen and have also been preparing dye baths with those. And we're gonna see the results of those compared to the vinegar here in a second. About 10 to 15 minutes has passed since we dropped our eggs into our dye baths. I've gathered all of my baby dye baths here together. Um, and we're gonna see the difference in adding at different acids to each of our dye baths. So this one is just plain water. This is our scientific control. And then of course we have our vinegar. This is lemon juice I had in my fridge. And then this is seltzer water I had in my fridge. So both lemon juice and seltzer water, just like vinegar, are also acids. They think lemon juice and vinegar are about are similar in their acidity, while seltzer water is a little bit less acidic than both of those. So we're gonna see what happens when we take these eggs out and if it affected the dyeing process in any way. Also, of course, how long you leave your eggs in the dye bath for, um, how much dye is in the dye bath will also affect the color and, and intensity of your eggs. So first we have, also very hot, just our plain water one, um, which did crack when I added the boiling water in. Um, this one isn't very blue at all. In fact, it's kind of purple. So I think the purple parts of the blue in the blue dye probably stuck to the egg a little bit better than the blue parts did. So that's interesting. That's our plain water egg. And now we have, I really didn't think this through on a white table, but here we are. Now we have our egg that had a rubber band on it. It had two, but it slipped off. Oh, that kind of turned out cool. And we have the spot in the rubber band. Didn't get any dye in it, it blocked it. And this egg is a lot more blue compared to our plain water egg. So the vinegar does have some sort of effect. Now let's take a look at our lemon juice egg. Our lemon juice egg did turn blue compared to our control of just the water, but it's not as blue as our vinegar egg. And then finally, our seltzer water egg is a little bit blue, 
but it's almost very similar to our plain water egg and nowhere near as blue to our lemon juice egg or our vinegar egg. And this one, our seltzer water, remember, it was the least acidic bath we did, closest to the just plain water, and they look the most similar. So as you can see, which I actually don't think they're in frame anymore, so let me grab you guys. Come here. <laughs> So as we go from plain water, lemon juice, oh, let me switch these, plain water, vinegar, lemon juice, and seltzer water, the difference in our eggs is tremendous. And remember, these were all in the dye for similar amounts of time. I tried to use about the same amount of food coloring, um, and I used the exact same amount of water in each of these. So the only big difference is the acid we use to change it. So isn't that super cool? Okay, I don't even know if I'm back in frame, but here we go. Oh gosh, I shouldn't move my camera this much. <laughs> so this is just a little bit of science and a little bit about how different acids can change the out whoop, outcome of our Easter egg dyeing. So that's some super cool organic chemistry for you guys right there. Today we had a lot of fun learning about organic chemistry in a popular holiday pastime of dyeing Easter eggs. So when we changed the different types of acids in these baths, which altered the surface chemistry of the eggs and let them be dyed different colors. So it's a really fun activity you guys could do at home. Change like different acids you get from your kitchen, like used other orange juice or lime juice or different acids. Um, you could put lemon juice and vinegar together and see what happens. You could put in more lemon juice or more vinegar or less water or more food dye. Change the amount of time the eggs in the dye, change the color. You could change so many different variables just and compare the eggs and see what happens. And remember, it's all science and it's all a lot of fun. Today's fun fact we're gonna rate in the comments on a scale of one to 10 is that the tradition of coloring Easter eggs actually came from Ukraine. So please be sure to rate that comment down, rate that fun fact in the comments below. I can never get that right. Um, like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram. Have a very happy Easter and keep it sciencey.